All right, I think we are going to move on. So firstly, via forum, if you don't know about via forum very quickly, it's an organization where pharma companies and suppliers can all come together and we work on collaborations. And this is one of those examples. This is to do with plug and play. And uh, we'll be talking to you a little bit about that um, as we go through this hour together. And one of the things that's important when we do with some of the, the ideas that we um, progress in, in Bioforum is to make sure that uh, the industry is being impacted, that there are things out there that we're offering through deliverables that are going to make the industry a little bit more efficient, a little bit better. And so one of the kind of ideas about this particular webinar is we want to talk to a wide as, audience, an, as wide an audience as we can about plug and play as a capability, why it's important to the industry, some of the things that we're doing uh, from a Bioforum point of view, but really just trying to help um, explore and share and uh, maybe just see how much we can help to drive on uh, with plug and play capability becoming an increasing reality for people. So for today, um, please participate. Please do let us know what you're thinking. So do that in a few ways. You can do that through the chat. Um, you can also do that through the um, hands and reaction uh, piece. So please do that. If you want to, um, can raise your hand and let me know that you'd like to speak and I'll do my best uh, just to pick up all those things as we're going through. So do please participate. We'd love to hear from you and there'll be a Q&A later on as well. So in terms of the um, agenda for today, uh, we have four speakers. Um, so we've got Eugene, who's going to chat about reusable platforms for manufacturing, sort of laying out the case about why this is important to buy a farmer and uh, the sorts of things that we expect to see as benefits from that. Um, then I'm going to ask Jean-Luc to talk to us a little bit about what the sort of situation looks like from the PEA and POL supplier perspective. So why is it good and useful and val valuable for them to be involved here too, build, providing these building blocks? Finally, but next, Bernhard is going to provide an example of what has been done already. So just giving you an idea that this isn't just um, stuff for the future, it's stuff for now and, and just kind of what's practical and what can be done. And then finally, Christy is going to chat about standards, what standards. So this is an area, as is many, as is the case in many areas of automation, where standards are important. Um, standards are also um, things that move around a little bit and develop. And so Christy's just going to give us a little bit of a sense of how that is happening and, and indeed why and how uh, we can be confident that uh, this is still a good thing to be uh, getting involved with. And then once that's happened, we'll do some Q&A and, &A. and um, we'll pick up questions then, but we'll also pick up any questions that you've popped into the chat uh, before that point, I hope. So hopefully that's all clear. Um, I will ask each of the uh, presenters just to give a little bit more of an introduction um, when it's their turn to speak so they can just say a little bit more about what they're doing and why that uh, why the topic is uh, important for them. So we're going to move on and um, Jean, I'm going to invite you to talk to the um, business of reusable platforms for manufacturing. And uh, as a reminder, just please give me a nod when you want me to move on to the next slide. OK, ready to go. Hello, everyone. Uh, Jean Tung, I'm with MSD Mark and I represent um, the end user perspective for plug and play automation. I will provide the big picture for uh, what we're trying to achieve, the necessity for it. And it starts with modular plant design. So the way we're transforming our business of capital projects and new facilities, um, as described by our vice president of engineering, is to deploy 40% less capital and to do 80% of the engineering work offsite. And it has a number of advantages um, as depicted in the graph below, which um, I sourced from Siemens. The idea is to do as much um, engineering as possible offline before the project even gets kicked off. And in that way, <coughs> uh, take advantage of as much as possible of module engineering in terms of clean rooms, HVAC, BAS, unit operations, um, as and the automation that supports that. All that should be done offline, so we minimize custom, uh, custom engineering and design and minimize the amount of time it takes to get a plant up and running and qualified. 
And so the advantage of that, not only just in cost, but in time savings. And the reason time savings are so important in our industry is because um, in a very competitive pharmaceutical industry, many companies are working to develop and commercialize the same molecule or the same class of molecules. And so as we race to go through clinical trials and then scale up our manufacturing, it becomes um, an issue of speed to market and becoming first mover uh, in a market where people have and companies have similar products. So in doing so in driving time savings, we maximize our chances of being um, a first mover in the market, first to market, and to gain all the uh, financial advantages of being uh, a first mover in the market. So modular engineering, not only is it uh, capital effective, it reduces the amount of custom engineering, but most importantly, it saves time in developing the project and get, getting a facility in, into commercial manufacturing as soon as possible. Next slide, please, uh, Tim. Okay, so I'll go over not every bullet here, but uh, many of the same reasons I described. Um, by doing modular plant design, um, we have the ability to achieve flexible manufacturing, implying fast changeover, and therefore you can use the same plant that you've constructed to, um, um, to manufacture more than one product. Um, and by doing so, we take advantage of um, a platform, which I'll describe in the next two slides, but platform style manufacturing allows us to use most of the same equipment um, already pre-qualified with some changeover depending on um, how we customize that for a new product uh, but rather than building a new facility using the same facility to uh, manufacture more than one product um, we've already talked to about cost savings but Typically, these modular facilities are compact uh, using prefab clean rooms, uh, prefabricated design, and um, generate cost savings with them. They are typically uh, can be ordered off the shelf um, just during cases of pandemic when you know this some of the stuff became scarce. But during peacetime activities, uh, th this equipment tends to be available for ordering. Um, as stated. Modular equipment can be reused for new products. In fact, in, intact uh, manufacturing platforms, 80 to 95% reuse of the line, just introducing new unit operations where necessary for a molecule. Um, we've spoken already about speed to market being essential in a competitive environment where multiple companies are often bringing to market uh, the same molecule. And uh, last one I'll discuss is reduction of investment risk. Uh, by entering the market with initially small production capacities rather than a full scale uh, production facility for the entire market, uh, we reduce the amount of risk um, that that's involved because many times our market forecasts are not accurate and uh, we want to reduce the risk of over investing in a large facility when we can start with a smaller facility and scale up or scale out as as necessary. Next slide, please, Tim. OK, so here's an example of a manufacturing platform for our vaccines business, and this is for the drug substance side as opposed to um, filling and formulation. Um, upstream, we typically carry um, uh, bioreactors that are modular, um, and uh, often it's a train of bioreactors that um, where we do our cell culture. And then in the purification space, we'll have uh, many unit operations, viral inactivation, uh, tangential flow filtration, diafiltration, ultrafiltration, centrifugation, chromatography, all <coughs> skid-based equipment, all modular, and as a manufacturing platform can be reusable for more than one molecule. And we've proven out the concept of this um, modular plant design uh, platform as shown in the next slide. Next slide, please, Tim. So during the pandemic, we had a facility in Elkton, Virginia, and over the course of one calendar year, we ran five different products through the same vaccine manufacturing platform, um, only in some cases subsidizing out certain unit operations, um, depending on the molecule we were uh, producing, but it included um, four different vaccines and one biologic. 
And in doing so, we proved out the concept of the manufacturing platform, uh, the ability to reuse major components of the platform, just substituting certain unit operations. We found it was quite easy to physically connect equipment in line to make the product. The difficulty was in data and control. And the data is really important in the pharmaceutical industry because basically we make two things. We produce product and we produce the data that supports the release of the product. And when much of that data is locked within PLCs and OEM equipment, um, that just makes it more difficult to release the product, to pipe your data to uh, the manufacturing analytics um, uh, uh, cloud platform for further analysis. Um, so what hopefully I've done is set up the case for why we need plug and play automation, the seamless connectivity between supervisory control systems nice. and the unit operations that <laughs> support the manufacturing <laughs> platform. So that wraps up my portion. Uh, I know and I don't I'm know. happy I'm to turn it over to so my colleague, Jean-Luc. I think I do hear some noise yeah. in the background. People don't mind muting. Uh, but uh, at this point, I'm happy to turn it over to uh, Jean-Luc. Thank you, Jean. Appreciate that. And and as Jean knows, just please uh, careful of your microphones and keep them uh, muted if you're not involved in the conversation at the moment. Um, so Jean-Luc, I'm going to ask you just to talk a little bit about how um, this looks from a PEA and POL supplier point of view and what sorts of issues and what sorts of opportunities this represents. So over to you. Yeah. To so yourself. I'm Jean-Luc Gerling. I'm working for Merck. Uh, and, um, in um, in Molsheim, and I'm a solution architect working currently in the software delivery and uh, development uh, in innovation. And um, in this case, thank you for setting up the case, uh, Jean. That was really great. Uh, it helps me to understand now <laughs> how we will do that. And in fact, uh, we are doing that through accelerating uh, this success by using the plug and play. And in one of the statements you will see here, uh, we, we are taking it over as, a, as an essential brick uh, from a modular automation perspective. And uh, as you already know, this facility of the future concept where the modular automation needs to jump in, we have several statements where we are coming from a legacy statement where the complexity of integration is what it is. Uh, it gives various operations and uh, the limited flexibility the long time, lead time for customizing those solutions and expen uh, expensive upfront is, uh, um, is a st problem statement where we need to go over. And for that, we need really to, to put in a, a parallel shift uh, for simplifying this uh, part. So first of all, we have to simplify a complex integration and improving efficiency through easy integration, reconfiguration, reengineability, and standardization reporting. Secondary, we need to provide flexibility and scalability also by allowing um, by allowing uh, any adjustments during the production, as already mentioned by uh, Jean. Uh, you saw the different products which needs to be uh, manufactured. Uh, we need to bring that adoption of uh, seamless and new processes uh, being held. Then third, we need to speed up the solutions as well because the development and the marketing production uh, as predefined specification needs to be standardized uh, as well for the sake of producing also uh, standardized data, uh, which helps them to, 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 to support the product delivery. And then lastly, we need to reduce the cost by enabling equipment reusability, but also to simplify integration and maintenance, uh, while giving also to the customers the freedom to choose vendor without restrictions. And this is where we have really open space to play. And you can move to the next slide if you don't mind, uh, Tim, uh, because we are in this bioform space. Uh, where we can invent and we can uh, safely uh, with the whole uh, industry uh, pushing that on top. Now uh, you see also that in this new um, in these new concepts we need to bring new solutions to adapt to involve with the new product needs and by this we have several uh, stages and layers to create. Uh, we need to we need to know that we are coming from an industry where we are thinking more system and here in this we are going more to process back and you see already that plug and play automation solutions will benefit from the supplier, from customer, and creating at the end a win-win uh, situation. Uh, from a process orchestration layer pro provider, can uh, do, there, there can be an adaptation made and a scale-up uh, of solutions to meet diverse customer needs. 
but also regardless to the vendor chosen, uh, this compatibility allows a seamless integration. Secondary, uh, there are the integrators, uh, not where we are part of, but also you can imagine we have also EPTs, engineering uh, project companies in the group, which will help us to understand how this integration needs to work. Uh, third, there is also the process equipment assembly vendor who will help them to, to bring it to, to real. And this is what I will show you in this module, that it will be co really concrete and actually going to demonstrators where we can really think that it will come soon to the industry and the use of it will be something relevant in the next uh, in the next year. And finally, biopharma manufacturers, uh, but not least, in fact, because this confidentiality of a uh, uh, modular uh, automated solution from any vendor without being locked in will help at the end also to sustain uh, in, in a way the, the production and delivery and make it easily uh, to the manufacturing ecosystem to, uh, to be flexible, to add, to remove, and to support also sometimes uh, something you know very well, this, this summer stops, this window stops, this um, each time you need to maintain your facility, uh, you will benefit from this technology as well. So with that said, we can move to the next slide where I will introduce you a little bit this technology. So this technology has been built on standards and uh, I will speak here also about the next slot a little bit because we will insist on the standards and give you a more oversight of where the standards have been already used. And we are starting here with something we had leveraged from another industry, which is coming from the process industry, in fact, where this, um, this part also has been uh, partially de risked. And uh, on top of Namur, we are sharing here a knowledge which has been uh, taken over already and is not mostly loose uh, in this industry. And uh, also in the next uh, part of this webinar, you will see Bernard giving you an example of it. You can move to the next slide if you don't mind. So in this technology, <clears throat> you have several parts uh, which are called uh, building blocks. Uh, for, for us, uh, meaning we, we have at first, uh, you can click and continue further, uh, the PEA process equipment assembly, which is in fact a new approach you are uh, giving for um, constituting the, the unit operation layer, which you will use at the end for doing your manufacturing. If you're clicking further, you will see then, then the, on the top, you will have the process orchestration layer itself, which is an overarching uh, control, uh, advanced controlled coordination solution, which starts already at the engineering phase because in fact, you will consider all these different parts of process uh, developments being part of this orchestration and being developed for the use. And then finally, if you click to the next slide, you have this model type uh, interface, which is no more than uh, like your, for your printer at home, an interface, uh, a driver layer, who helps you to integrate it very fast, very easily. Indeed, that you can add also on the unit operation layer, uh, differences, which we can still keep of each of our, our, all of the OEMs uh, to integrate um, to integrate it in the solution. You can click to the next slide. The standardized um, file has a description, in fact, which helps this integration. And as you know, the standardized way to take it over uh, has different parts of it. So first, the part of definition you need to integrate it is MTP file is in fact the, the PNID uh, description because it's the ma ma main uh, usage on, on how you are interfacing it with the right side where you see the service and control parameters. Uh, this, these two parts will be helping you to control your process. But we know also we are in the pharmaceutical industry. We need to manage all the other parts. And the standard itself has, has it taken already in, the con in consideration. One of the first part is alarm and even. But because we are working also on a very, very new technology, uh, we need also to think that this standard needs to be modular as well. So increasing, and uh, you see on the pie in the middle, we need to integrate, we need to integrate as well uh, maintenance, diagnostic, safety considerations, at least also um, other considerations coming in future standards. We can imagine AI and other concepts. If you can go to the next slide, uh, Tim, <coughs> you will see in the presentation of how this works. And this uh, standard has you know, already been foreseen by uh, the standard itself. It comes uh, the design uh, module layer uh, as a first part where we need to integrate uh, this consideration. And this was our entry point um, at the engineering level where we already uh, wrote a, a bunch of different uh, specifications for making it real. 
uh, and aligning also the industry. Because uh, if the technology gives already an understanding of plug and, what plug and play means, you need to have also a, a further understanding of what the plug and play is for the process. And this is why we build up a lot of specifications for supporting it. Then once the, the, the file has been defined for the unit operation, we need to, we need to generate for, uh, we can generate the file and integrate it in, integrating it in our process orchestration layer, use it with the full uh, capability of production. But this is where, and if you're clicking further, uh, the solution itself brings much more flexibility. Now you can imagine that with these different modules and different uh, orchestra uh, orchestrations you can have, you can adapt to your production. And in the dynamic way, adapt also the process management, the data management, and a lot more on it. If you're clicking to the next slide, please, you will see, and I'm coming back to the slide, which has been already, and uh, that's great. We are coming together, Jean, in, in the way we are seeing these things, in fact, uh, how we are enabling that. In the past, you had uh, flexibility, had flexibility limited by the effort you had to put on, and uh, all the customization has been created by the fact that you had the programmer working online, the automation engineer helping him, the electrical engineer already modifying as you go, and the validation engineer validated at the end. This is the part you have on the top. But in, in fact, in the future, with these new capabilities on plug and play, you can integrate much more and much easier. And on the other side also, you need to have a good understanding on the, on the engineering side of the process and make it happen directly with those. But you will um, limit a lot of interaction, a lot of customized work by using just this open system approach, enabling a breed of uh, different vendors uh, for the fact that you have a standardized way to integrate these different uh, unit operations. You enhance also by these different capabilities, uh, flexibility, reduced for, sure, reduced for sure the engineering time because uh, once the file is um, developed, you can still reuse it and re um, adapt it as well uh, if you have seamless uh, unit tops to put uh, at the end. Uh, you have also faster product development because in fact, the reusability of your different kits is, is, is shared across your production lines, you have more standardized modules. What we are working also with is uh, uh, convergence in the standards itself, because we are reusing already well-known standards in the industry, but not only for biopharmaceutical. And finally, we, you will, all, over all of that, uh, reduce the cost. So we are going from a way to deploy from weeks to months, where we were in the past, to hours to days. If you don't mind, we can go to the next slide. Well, I will show you how we use that and what we developed. So our use case here was a concept demonstrated by on a, by on a 50 liter bioreactor, which is not commercialized yet, but you will see the, the, the progress on it is very, very far from, a, from this perspective. And uh, we had it connected to this 50 liter, liter, liter bioreactor for the sake of being able uh, to demonstrate also the control capabilities, the, the, the performance and, and different other views of it. Uh, from a data flow perspective, because again, um, we are not only testing the things uh, for the control, but also for being sure that all the capability will be uh, will be well uh, engaged. On the right side, you see the different specification we developed for that purpose. And thank you for all bio uh, BioForum members. Uh, there was big participation to create that up. That was uh, amazing work, uh, and it continues. It's also a journey. It's a long journey. You need to be resilient. You know, the term resilient uh, came up several times, but we are also here resilient in a way we are working together. And this is the major the major achievement. I think it's, it's very important to have that. Uh, you see the different uh, specifications. So we developed a steer tank unit uh, interface specification, an audit trail requirement specification. That is a draft version we could benefit on on the alarm strategy, and we are learning also here with other consortia to make sure that we are not uh, doing our uh, our way to work in, in siloed. And finally, also a plug and play computerized system validation strategy for having that all in, um, in control. So if you're going to the next slide, <coughs> I can show you up the use case in details also. We did several tests for the proven. So we are building here also on tests we did previously for the two or three past years with other vendors. and. Uh, to make sure the principle is working. So you see just here an example on how this was uh, held. We did a test with the different uh, pol 
potential poly vendors on these solutions, Amazon, Rockwell, Siemens, Copa Data, you will see later on. It's also a way that we are showing up that we can embark more and more uh, vendors uh, for doing this uh, plug and play capability. On the bottom side, you see the our unit operation uh, vendors who on that, at that time were Paul, Cytivia, Merck, uh, Sartorius, and uh, all is that is a living piece of our uh, way to move forward. If you're moving to this next slide, uh, we will directly show you also the different captures, and these are captures from the current testing uh, slots we had, plug and play, fast, we call them, uh, to demonstrate that this is really a relevant technology, not only for one vendor, but for all vendor, and also now what you will see if you move to the next slide, uh, a use case on where we developed the bioreactor. So it's a small movie just to give you an understanding on how this works. So we developed already also local HMIs for the purpose. And in you can start the video if you don't mind, Timmy. Thanks, Nick. Okay, so uh, you see in the first here, you have a complete full-fledged developed uh, HMI uh, with the different uh, parts of specification from Bioforum Group integrated. So here, for example, you will see an agitation phase running and with the state model coming from the standard, from the MTP uh, standard uh, defined uh, previously, and we are using currently for the supporting our, uh, our run in this demonstration. Uh, on the next part, you will see also the different uh, other, uh, other um, services you have on top, for example, temperature and all the different parts which have been de already defined. The MTP file has been created also, and uh, currently this MTP file is, is quite big. It's, it's comporting uh, something like 140,000 lines on definitions, but it's feasible to ingest, it's feasible to use. Uh, all these different Can parts have been created. Uh, you will see on the next uh, part of the administration how we are ingesting this file. Uh, it's just to give you also the understanding that it happens in the real. When you are integrating a new system to uh, um, take up the file and then orchestrate it, uh, like you would put um, a driver file to your printer. But for that, you need to have, to have a physical printer. Actually, this instance of a physical variable is on the left. And we are integrating it for the use and giving uh, just an understanding. You can here also uh, select the different uh, variables. And uh, by generating then your project, you will integrate it in a real use on the pond control. Once it's going to the pond pole control, you will see the uh, first aspect of the use is the PNID. And this is how the PNID is reflecting. And it uh, was the case also for the other vendors. As usual, it's com a complete integration and you get at the same time also the different um, the different services integrated in your pod solution. Finally, um, when you are going uh, to the next when you are going to the next you will see a, a portal also for the recycling management, which is also in some uh, by the way we integrated the specification compliant to the ISA 88 part uh, with the different services. It's a quick build up. Uh, the film is accelerated just for the purpose to give you a little understanding on how we could uh, develop it. And now uh, with these different uh, capabilities, we run just the agitation phase to the demonstration and uh, build it up. Finally, the alarm, which is on the construction, this is just the demonstration of the ongoing specification. So. Uh, as it has not been integrated in the in the poll part for now, uh, we demonstrated on the uh, Bioform group just the feasibility uh, to manage it as we have specified it. It's using alarm and condition from uh, PCUA. Uh, the model has been developed so that also the current uh, existing uh, audit trail can use it, and the audit trail part of that is already running and uh, taking over all the different uh, data needed for the traceability and for the production of all the events which will happen on uh, the control. So with that, I think we are going coming to the end of our demonstration. And uh, thank you for listening. It was quite big. It was a challenge also to show you some relevant pieces of these building blocks. And I can hand it over now to Bernard, who will follow on a, on a real use case and deployment in a, in a facility. Thanks very much, Jean-Luc. Um, let me just click away from that. So yes, as as Jean-Luc says, so we'll just hear a little bit from Bernhard about an example of what's going on in a particular organization today. So Bernhard, please introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about what's happening. Sure. Um, <clears throat> thank you, Tim, for a nice introduction. Thanks, Jean-Luc and Eugene. 
showing us already what is the module plant, the module production, giving us some, some details about the standard itself, what is MTP, what is the core standard parts of it. So my name is Bernhard, I'm working for Cooper Data, and you have heard there is Pulse Systems, so we are a software provider. Somebody has to develop the tools to make your life easier and uh, orchestrate this equipment, as you have seen it uh, real quick in the, the recording of, of Jean-Luc, and this Pulse System is provided also, one of them is provided by Cooper Data. I want to start with a, with a real uh, customer story. As, as you've heard, so Mer Merck is a kind of front runner in this area. So last year they have announced already in July that uh, they introduced the module automation for laboratories in Darmstadt in this case. So you see here this equipment and these fume huts, they have automated completely with this modular approach by the use of MTP of, of this standard and they are first in the, in the chemical industry. Uh, next slide, please. So um, as, as you know, and if, as, as you have seen already in detail by Eugene, as the product life cycles in, in the life sciences, they are becoming shorter and shorter. Also, this was the reason for Merck for looking for a new solution. Please click. They want to have an easy solution to create and modify the plant configuration and get the fast upscaling from the lab to the production. And in the end, they want to save 50% uh, of time to market. What you see here, this is uh, equipment like it was done in the past, I would say. Um, what do they have there? So they, they are in the, in the laboratory environment. They have a lot of lab equipment. It's, in some, it's around 120 such fume hoods. And every of those hoods uh, integrates a lot of different equipment you have to connect. So it's uh, <clears throat> pumps, steerers, dosing units, chillers, and, and what else they have there for doing their tests. And in the past, these tests have been carried out on a manual basis and later, of course, they were using uh, conventional lab control systems, but both with a lack in flexibility. Please, can you click, Tim? And nowhere else, as, as you might imagine, nowhere else is much dynamics as in a laboratory, so the flexibility is key. These tests are rebuilt and carried out on, on an everyday basis, so this rebuilding of these tests, like you saw in this animation now, this uh, requires a lot of time and costs. So for Merck, modularization with MTP was a real game changer here. Um, the goal was to enable also the lab technicians to integrate and automate the required modules themselves without the need of any programming knowledge. Next slide, please. Here, connectivity, you see an, an architecture example where we have uh, the three layers. So we have the lab and the production layer here. We have the data center in between or, or your local data center, however you, you want to use it, and, and an office section. Uh, when we start here in lab at the production, you see here there's different lab equipment. And this lab equipment, this, this lab equipment speaks a different language. So every equipment has a, another language. And, and with MTP, you want to make them speak the same language like we do now speaking English. I hope you understand my Austrian English, by the way. So this is the same what we do with, with MTP here. The first equipment probably has a serial connection, RS232, very common in, in the lab. That The second one has a mode bus TCP and, and so on. So it's different protocols speaking different language. And what you see here, this, this MTP box, uh, we help them also to get their existing equipment ready to speak this common language and then to be, be ready to be orchestrated, like you have seen and presented by, by Jean-Luc in the process orchestration layer, just by drag and drop this equipment into your orchestration. So this we see here on, on the data center side, this is the, the poll layer, the process orchestration layer, which you can run as well redundant, or you can have several instances of this process orchestration layer where the lab technicians in an easy easy way without the need of programming can do this orchestration on on their own and and reschedule or rearrange the equipment on a, on a daily basis or uh, whatever is needed for the next uh, batch production there is a central database in place as well for uh, recording process data event alarm data and on top you see some engineering station where you can do the orchestration uh, and of course there is access for several clients to be connected to the system next slide please this is an example picture from 
inside. This has been approved by Merck to, to share it. This is such a, a fume hut that you get an understanding of what equipment is inside. And and this, this lab guy here, his job is to rearrange, connect all these different systems. And as you might imagine, every, every equipment speaks in a language. This might cause headaches and it takes a long time to really figure that out. And a lot of Excel files and stuff is around. And with, with this common language now, or we heard already this, this driver, let's call it a driver, like you connect the printer. The poll system knows immediately also the service, not just, just the connection, also the service, what you can do with such a device. For example, if you have a bioreactor, what, what you can do with bioreactor, you can fill it, drain it, mix it, probably heat it up and, and additional services. Okay, next slide, please. So initially, they did not even consider MTP, Manfred Eckert said, Associate Director for Process Development and Merck. We started 2019 with Merck and worked half a year on this project. And finally, they were convinced that this is the right choice to move on for this modular production. And we started 2019 as a first proof of concept and pilot project. And then uh, finally, the project is is running it's a real project there it's not just a theoretic proof of concept this is really running and it's around 70 or 80 already of those fume hoods are automated fully with a process orchestration layer and with a full compliant mtp equipment inside makes it easy for orchestration of of the lab technicians next slide please here you can see an example screen basically um john luke has has shown this in his video where they orchestrate the equipment and operate the equipment. But what is done here with this MTP file, you get not just the, the communication, it's also included the HMI design. So it is the PNID, how this equipment looks like in the process screen. You have here the process screen of, of a bioreactor. Then we saw that there is services for batch. This is what is what is this equipment capable of doing? And the cool thing is that this is described also in this MTP file, what services are in the end, what phases of ISA 88 are included. And they are automatically configured in the control system, like you see here. So the phases are ready and you can use them to create your recipe, execute uh, later on this recipe on an easy manner. There is uh, automatic, so this, this 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 whole project is created automatically by just uh, clicking one one button, which reduces also uh, errors you might have. There is dashboard alarm management, as you heard by by Jean Luc already. They are working on the standard. The core functionality is ready, so you can start already with the standard. Think about it. Uh, getting ideas where you could use this in the future. But here they, we use the conventional alarming system, which is in the system. Of course, audit trail training reporting and so on. What is required also to, to cover uh, GMP projects or to cover the regulations part. Next slide, please. Exactly. Here another example, because this has been discussed very often. As uh, mentioned, it includes the phases for ESA 88. Now you see here on the right hand side, there is a PFC recipe open, the pro uh, procedural function chart, uh, ESA 88 compliant, where you, depending on, of course, the user rights, you can create your master recipe, execute the control recipe, uh, have an approval workflow included. So it's very easy uh, also by drag and drop to put your phases services together, uh, how you need it for the next batch production. Next slide, please. So this these figures come basically from the Namur. The Namur uh, is an international user association of automation technology and digitalization in the process industries based in Germany. And they say, and also Merck approved, that uh, with this technology, you reduce the time to market by 50%, you lower the production costs by 40%, and easy rearrangement, you increase the flexibility by 80%. Next slide, please. As a summary, what have been the benefits uh, for, for Merck in Darmstadt by using this technology? Basically, the first three we had on, on the last side, faster time to market, uh, faster development times, flexible uh, system configuration or easy rearrangement if, if required. The fast upscaling from lab to production. So this technology not only can be used in the lab, it also can, can be used for, for, for large equipment and in production. Um, and uh, one important benefit is that the lab technicians they don't have they, they don't need to have any programming skills you can do 
this by just drag and drop. Um, we are getting a lot of requests in this area. A lot of big end users are requesting or putting this in, in the new specs. Um, the idea is that they get in the future, they get equipment ready for MTP. There is a file delivered with it, which or we'll call it a driver for this file, which you easy can then integrate in whatever poll system you're choosing. We are one of them. So um, I think this is a game changer for our future automation. And let's move on to this together. Thanks for listening. So I hand over back to Tim. Thank you, Bernhard. And now we're going to hear finally from Christy, who's going to talk to us a little bit about the standard situation um, as it deploys into this area. So, Christy, over to you. Thanks, Tim. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about standards. I am Christy Dietz from Emerson. I'm currently in the Delta V Technology Organization. But prior to my current role, I spent over 25 years in automation project execution. So I've seen the effort and the calendar time required for a custom integration of skids. And I appreciate the potential savings from a plug and play approach. So I would also like to start by saying that standard is standards is not always a very exciting topic. Um, the industry has so many Sometimes they overlap, sometimes they conflict. So I'm going to be giving an overview of how our Bioform plug and play work relates to the standards, both the basis standards and some of the influences. So on the slide here, um, you can see the basis standards for the plug and play effort were uh, module type package MTP and OPC UA. So um, we were working on a goal to make connecting biomanufacturing skids easier. Um, we wanted a platform where skids can be easily integrated without extensive engineering effort, and similar skids could be interchanged with minimal work. We did not necessarily start out with the idea of promoting any given standards, but we did want to leverage any existing work rather than reinventing the wheel. Some of our standards, or some of our members were familiar with uh, Nemours MTP, um, as you know, MTP is a vendor neutral functional description of a process automation module. And we agreed that this MTP was a non-industry specific standard that we could leverage um, to accomplish our biopharma plug and play. On the next slide, we're gonna talk a little bit more about MTP. Um, MTP, it turns out, also uses another standard um, similar to Bioform plug and play. Um, they didn't start out with the idea to promote any other standard, but rather wanted to leverage existing work and not reinvent the wheel. Um, so they chose OPC UA as a communication backbone. OPC UA is a cross platform open source standard developed by OPC UA um, and introduced in 2006. So, next slide, Tim. Um, so Jean-Luc and Bernhardt introduced the principles of the MTP earlier. Um, MTP is a way of describing a process automation module uh, like a production skid, which lets it work uh, more easily into and fit more easily into larger applications. Um, it's a common shared definition of basic capabilities, interfaces and services intended to let the modules plug and play with other devices and systems. MTP was initiated and developed by Nemours and ZVEI, the German Electrical and Elect Electronics Manufacturing Association. Um, starting in 2023, uh, Profibus and Profinet International will be responsible for further development for quality assurance and distribution of MTP. Um, you can see in the table that the standard is released in blots or sections. And um, several sections uh, were already released prior to the move to PI and will be re-released in 2024. And there are additional sections that are in development. If you're interested in MTP, we really hope you'll join us for the next webinar on December 4th, where we'll take a deeper dive. Um, next slide, Tim. So, as far as influences, you probably know that we're now in what industry calls um, the fourth industrial revolution, sometimes called industry 4.0 or smart factory. Um, the idea is that uh, increasing automation and better data make uh, manufacturing goods and products uh, more efficient and more effective. Um, ISP, 
PE Pharma 4.0 is the application of Industry 4.0 to life sciences industry. Um, and basically what that means is it helps us to make uh, you know, the complex portfolio of products in the pharmaceutical industry more effectively. Um, finally, uh, VDI is the German um, Engineering Association and their Manufacturing X initiative encourages Industry 4.0 and promotes advan advancement of easy hardware and software connectivity. So our Bioforum plug and play effort really embraces and advances all of these principles by providing a way for easier integration, better flexibility, and better data integration. So next slide, Tim. So some of you may be wondering, uh, why are we moving forward with standards that are perhaps not uh, complete or still evolving? And the bottom line is that technology is always evolving and standards are always evolving to keep up with it. However, the business need for easier integration is now. So we move forward with the tools we have. And I think that's the end of mine, Tim, if you'd like to. Yeah, no, it is. So thank you so much, um, Christy, and thank you to others also for your presentation. So we've got a time of questions, so please do have a think about those. Just before we get into that, I'm just going to show you this. Christy um, noted it in her presentation. We said that we have a follow on webinar, uh, which we're planning for now the Monday, the 4th of December. And um, on the screen, you'll see some of the details of what we're hoping to do. So we'll talk a little bit more about the standards and some of the detail around that. We'll talk a little bit more about validation, validation approaches, some of the regulatory concerns, and then again, perhaps some real world use cases. So those are the things that we want to uh, do on that session. So again, there'll be some registration information coming out over the next few weeks. So please look out for that and sign up. But back to this today's webinar and uh, the opportunities for questions. So um, I'm not sure whether there's anything um, in the chat particularly at the moment, but have any of you got any questions of clarification or just comments that you'd like to make as a result of what you've heard from the speakers today? Hi, Joe, um, I can see you put your hand up, so please uh, just come on camera if you wouldn't mind and uh, ask your question. Awesome, yeah, hi everybody. Um, great presentations today. Uh, I'm from Siemens, as I mentioned, and uh, my impression so far is that automation suppliers like Siemens and the others that are here today and uh, the end users also are very eager to implement this sort of modular standard solution like MTP. But um, what I'm interested in today is how eager the folks have noticed that the OEMs are, um, the folks that have executed these projects in the past. Uh, are the OEMs getting on board easily or does it take a lot of handholding? Jean, maybe I can ask you to come at this just from the point of view of somebody who's probably contracting with some of those um, organizations. So um, thanks for the question, Joe, and you're absolutely correct. I think it's um, the OEM vendors who are, you know, the PEA vendors are, are a critical component in this ecosystem to make MTP work. And we've seen good uptake like at the plug fests and um, uh, Maybe I can also invite one of my PA <laughs> colleagues to join the conversation, Jean-Luc, and you know maybe provide his perspective. I think you know based on his presentation, their company's uh, enthusiastic, both as an end user, as you saw in Berhard's uh, um, uh, presentation, but also as, as as an equipment provider. Yeah, I can take it over from here. And again, uh, um, yeah, it's it's for us. It's uh, it's also um, you know we are focusing with this technology. If you are looking, uh, you can really focus on on what is the core of your of your of your of your process of your part, and you can really um, by developing it uh, in detail and, and more further on the capabilities you are really focusing on. You know, you have not, not to to really reinvent the three wheel valve uh, differently than another and another and another because you are focusing on a really standardized way to to create automation. You can uh, then go to the core of the process itself, uh, to the different ways you need to develop uh, your unit ops uh, for supporting the newest part of your of your um, of your process, which is the demand coming from the 
and biomanufacturers, uh, they want to have new processes for supporting their new cells and, and so on and so on. So you should not each time reiterate a modular way to make a, I take a, a very basic example of a three-way valve, which you can build with one, with two, with three, or at least having one core valve. Uh, again, uh, this is where you can then focus on what you need really to have, and at the end, make it also modular. So it's a it's a step, step baby step, where you're bringing modularity inside your process. But uh, there is also a, a real interaction with those who are developing the process itself, because we need already, when you are creating uh, your process season uh, to understand what it means. Uh, what is your process modularity? I'm not speaking here from the automation modularity. What is your process modularity you need to have? Okay. Can we continue with uh, the way uh, already um, ISA 88 had it, had it foreseen for many times ago? Okay. There are, there are other questions coming up because you need to modelize your, your process even much more before in your engineering step. Okay, so I will stop here because otherwise I can speak too long with it. <laughs> Thanks, yep, yep. Dolly. And thanks, Joe, for the question. Um, any any others? Can you hear me? No. I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, yeah, this book art uh, from Sartorius. Um, I just uh, wanted to chime in on the question uh, from Siemens um, and wanted to give the view from, from Sartorius here. Um, so we are committed to, to provide MTP solution uh, to our customers. Um, uh, and in the first place, it will be, well, let me put it like that. We will provide solutions. It will not be standard standard products included with MTP in the first place, but uh, in the long run, we will have MTP in our products. That's a statement from, from Sartorius. Okay, thank you. Um, I've got a question on the um, the Q and A. So David has asked, he's had to leave unfortunately. He's asking, is Bioforum planning for a QC laboratory automation plug and play team? Um, so that's a really good question. So just to put a couple of pieces together very quickly, there is a this this particular activity, this plug and play work happens within the technology strategy forum, and there is separately a plug and pl a, a, a laboratory automation piece of work within BPIT uh, Bioforum IT. And so um, what we um, what we are doing there is we're just having that conversation certainly about kind of overlaps and uh, you know some of that was raised as examples for today. So is there a plan to have a plug and play team there? Um, probably not entirely sure, but nonetheless, uh, it's a great point and I'll pick it up with colleagues and we'll certainly make sure those um, connections are strengthened. Any other questions that are um, that anybody would like to to ask. One of the questions I'd like to ask, maybe I can just uh, throw this out to the panel. Oh, I'm sorry, somebody's got their hand up, big pardon. Um, Adam, please go ahead. Yes, thank you. Great presentations. Uh, Kristin mentioned um, the overlapping and sometimes conflicting standards out there in the ecosystem. I, I just wanted to bring up this question. Um, OPC UA was, was on the map on the system architecture or uh, layout. Um, I, I, I wanted to raise how um, companion specifications such as the laboratory and analytical device standard or even the SILA standard um can can serve as alternatives maybe in such an ecosystem or what are the considerations to to go for um mtp um tim if you don't mind i'll i'll take that one please okay first of all thank thanks for a very good question um and if i may rephrase it uh you're asking about um this kind of a world of standards connecting either control systems or instrumentation to, you know, higher level systems in the um, S95 architecture. It's a good, there, there are multiple standards. Most of them I see as complementary. So we know about MTP where there's um, controller to controller, typically um, communication um, with S88, uh, you know, states 
and um, the ability to pass information back and forth sitting on top of OPC UA. In, in the laboratory systems, I see a lot of good ones. I'm not so familiar with Scylla. I, I do know Allotrope is one my company does a lot of work with, a standard laboratory automation, very good for things like chromatography, things with metadata, where you make a run and then you know all this information can be shared about shared in an allotrope format and that's particularly good for laboratory equipment so there is a world of standards i i see them really as complementary and many of them are tailored for certain types of equipment um i i should also mention open process automation which um is running in collaboration with nemore and mtp and is thinking of about adopting that as part of their standard of standards and open process automation has some very nice um developments going on to create an abstraction layer again between um, systems and, and controllers. So um, as much as possible, we do research in the bioform and work with other standards to understand where they best fit in. And then maybe some other authorities, maybe it's open process automation, will establish a standard of standards overall for communication between devices. That sounds Hopefully awesome. That Thanks for that. Yep. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Gene, and thanks, uh, Adam, for the question. We are pretty much out of time. I am sorry, time has run away with us. So although it'd be good to have the conversation carry on, I fear we're going to need to stop. If you do have other questions, either pop them in the chat before we finish and or you know, just get in touch and we'll make sure that we can try and answer those um, in some different ways. I've said we're going to come back on Monday, the 4th of December for a separate and additional webinar. Um, Share you some of the content there later earlier. So please look out for that. And uh, if you can do join us and we'll dive into this topic a little bit more and just see if we can continue to push this along and hopefully make a difference in the industry. So thank you all for attending. Uh, that's the end of the webinar today.